Hey, welcome back. It is the Phil Valentine Show. And, uh, you know, a lot of folks have become disenchanted uh, with the Dalai Lama, not knowing exactly uh, what that hope and change was all about. Eric Rush uh, is actually a conservative, and he happens to be a black man. And I, I, I tell you that because we're going to talk about how, uh, black Republicans offering hope after uh, Barack Obama's failure on race. Eric, how are you? I am well. How are you? I'm just fine myself. So uh, uh, you've been a Republican for a long time or what? Uh, well, yeah, actually, since my uh, early 20s, which was really kind of uh, unusual for someone who of color who grew up in the New York City area. Yeah, no kidding. Well, see, I grew up, actually, my father was chairman of the Democratic Party when I was growing up, so... I, and uh-huh. I became I became a Republican and a conservative myself. But you know, we 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 have to make these decisions on our own. I don't know how old you are, but I came of age during Reagan, and and uh, you know, I'm looking around at the Democrats that are out there. There's Walter Mondale and Jesse Jackson and folks. Like I'm going, you know, I don't have anything in common with these folks. They don't they don't offer anything for me. And but a lot of people don't think for themselves. It's just whatever their family was, they're going to be that too. Have you found that to be the case? Generally speaking, yeah, that, that really tends to be the case, you know, unless you have somebody who is uh, extremely rebellious or just uh, um, a, a critical thinker, you know, which, of course, we're not encouraged to do these days. But uh, I do know of some conservatives whose uh, parents were, were Democrats and they uh, just happened to, you know, be the kind of inquiring mind that uh, started investigating stuff and was like, geez, you know, I don't think this is really for me, and they became conservatives. I actually came of age, I was, uh, when Reagan was elected, I was uh, 19, so... Uh, yeah, I was about, about the same age, so, yeah, that, yeah, that was the first presidential election I could vote in. Yes, the same here, yeah. And I made the mistake, my father talked me into voting for Jimmy Carter, and I went in and I, and I pulled the lever for Jimmy Carter, and immediately... I had voter remorse and asked the lady when I came out, can I change my vote? And she says, no, you can't. And, but, but, I, but at least it was a defining moment for me, Eric. I knew then, you know, that, that my heart was telling me to vote for Reagan, and I never looked back. And, and it's one of those defining moments. But, you know, the, the, a lot of people just are, are mind-numbed um, on both sides, really. I mean, we have people voting Republican just because their parents were Republicans and they're told to do that. They really don't know why they uh, or where they stand or why they stand for whatever they stand for, if they stand for anything. They're just doing it uh, sort of robotically, aren't they? Uh, well, yeah, actually. And a friend of mine uh, wrote a column that was uh, in World Net Daily today that talks about the evils of supporting uh, weak-kneed Republicans. You know, I mean, that's part of the reason that a lot of folks do. I know some, I know Democrats do it, too, but that... Republicans support Republicans just because they're Republicans, and right. that's part of the reason that you know we're in the shape we're in now. Well, the Mike Castle thing is a classic example. I mean, we got a guy up there who is, for all intents and purposes, this guy's a Democrat. He votes with yeah. the Democrats. Uh, he's a very liberal uh, guy, and but but because he's got an R after his name, in his case, it stands for Rhino, and we don't need to be voting for folks just because they have a big R after their name. No, absolutely not. And I've been I've been sort of hammering on that point. Uh, over the last few weeks, myself, so I have a lot of people. Well, so what? I mean, so what do you tell? Um, um, you got a book out, right? Yes, I do. Tell tell us about the book because I, I well, that's why I want to swerve into this of how we reach folks in the uh, quote unquote black community who have historically voted Democrat at least probably since um, uh, Harry Truman. Uh, and how we get to people and say, look, you've got to break this cycle of, of stupidity and start thinking for yourself like you and I have done. Well, I think the, uh, the key thing is that we have to educate people as to what uh, progressivism has been doing to the country. And, uh, you know, in my opinion, progressivism occupies the same uh, low moral ground that uh, segregationism did with respect to what it's doing to all, you know, all of us. But my book is called um, Negrophilia, From Slave Block to Pedestal, America's Racial Obsession. It just came out in June, and it basically addresses the how, <clears throat> how race politics has been w- just in one aspect of the left's uh, devices for essentially taking over the United States, dividing us, 
uh, they, that's one of their key things. I mean, it's a staple of Marxism, but they've been dividing the races by, you know, they hijacked the civil rights agenda back in the 70s and have been putting forth this uh, worldview that misrepresents and deceives blacks, um, makes, uh, you know, demonizes whites and puts forth the idea that America is still an institutionally racist nation. And that's but one of the things that we really need to uh, address and educate people about in this sort of struggle we're in to take back America and make it more constitutional again, as, as opposed to this sort of socialist Marxist progressive thing that it's becoming. Right, and, and it's and, and we're on an accelerated path to that too. But we have oh, yeah. we we have many people who believe that they are entitled to to, to something, entitled to something, even even uh, to the point of of reparations or thinking they're entitled for something that happened to people two hundred years ago. Uh, so how do, how do we break people out of that mindset? There are plenty of people out there who think, well, you know, uh, you need to give me some money because I'm black, or give me some money because I'm whatever. And now we've got the gays that are trying to to, to hijack the uh, the civil rights uh, movement for their own, and and uh, you know everybody's looking for something uh, to be entitled to something uh, from the government or from somebody yeah. else. Well, for the last forty years, have been incrementally convincing people that they they should be getting government checks just for sucking air, uh, and it, they've been very successful with blacks and propagandizing them in that area. But what we really have to do is just get enough people um, to elect the kind of folks who are going to go in there and just take some of this stuff away and say, hey, you know what, you're not entitled to this. And, you know, in the big picture, we really have to hit progressivism at its core because it's, you know, the main reason that people are getting educated into believing that uh, they're entitled to things propagandized into, you know, thinking that America is this big, fat, evil machine that was built on the bones of indigenous people and just all of the, you know, the total, total global bucket of, you know, left-wing claptrap. Um, it's really not, it's not a bunch of little things. We have to go for the head of the snake, and that's progressivism. Yeah, and that's what uh, this administration is really all about, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. And he's taken us, as you mentioned, you know, exponentially closer during uh, the last couple of years. But how ingenious, though, to wrap this socialism in a black man so that, that uh, he is impervious to, uh, to uh, anybody criticizing him. Otherwise, you'll be called a racist. I mean, if you had any other if you had a if this were a, a white president trying to do this, it would be a totally different story, wouldn't it? I mean, the, the, he, get, he, he gets a lot of leeway because people are afraid to criticize him because he's black, or am I misreading this? No, of course, that's absolutely true. A white guy with his baggage never would have gotten elected, and I talk about that in the book. Uh, you know, having elected him just because he's black on an individual level is a subtle form of racism, but the people who, who helped to get him in there, like his, you know, his kitchen cabinet, his community organizer people, George Soros, the rest of the big donors... You know, they knew by supporting him that they were supporting a guy who would have a much, uh, who would have an advantage of uh, pushing forward the socialist agenda in a big way because he wouldn't be able to be criticized on that very basis. They knew, you know, we saw before he even got elected that if you, if you said something about him having a bad hair day, they leaped on you for being a racist and they continued to do that. Yeah, and you can't mention his middle name. He can, but you can't mis- mention his middle name or you're accusing him of being a Muslim. So, oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and you can't win. So we, we now we've been, you know, we're almost two years uh, into this administration, and we've seen the damage they can do in this short period of time. I have called this a kamikaze Congress. I think that these people knew they were in there for a short period of time, trying to do as much damage as they could uh, and trying to wreck the country as, as much as they can. Do you feel this groundswell of, of change that's coming in November with the, with the Republicans? And if so, uh, how much is that going to affect Congress? I mean, are we going to see a 50-seat, 60-seat? Or, or what do you think is going to happen in November? I think we're really going to clear their clock, clean their clock. I, I, you know, I think that it may actually go up to 60 based on what the, the tone I see out there in the polls that are, uh, that are, are coming in. But I'm also my column for World Net Daily tomorrow is going to address the fact that not only do we have to keep these new Republicans 
we get in there, they're, you know, keep their feet to the fire. But we can also expect it to be a big struggle because Obama is going to step up his agenda rather than pull back. He's right. going to use his czars. He's going to use executive orders to get things through. He's not planning to go quietly, believe me. Yeah, they, 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 there was a piece, I guess, the day before yesterday we were talking about this, uh, where they're planning on uh, you know how to exercise uh, the executive branch and the power he has to get some of these things done. And, and it wouldn't put it, I wouldn't put it past them for things like amnesty for illegal aliens or de facto amnesty by not enforcing the laws that we have now. Well, yeah, I mean, essentially that's what he's doing right now, coming down on the... Uh, the wrong side of the, you know, the Arizona law thing, you know, I mean, that's the de facto, de facto, de facto, excuse me, amnesty or at least license for as many people to come in here now as possible uh, because they're, you know, they can see on the horizon that uh, amnesty might be a, a, a big thing. And, of course, Obama and his community organizers being who they are, uh, these folks don't have to be citizens to be uh to, you know, to vote early and often. Right, and even dead, uh, as they do many yeah. times in Chicago. So so how do we get <clears throat> how do we get to the black vote, though, um, Eric? I mean, because it seems to me that when you talk about black voters, you're talking about people who are in, uh, inherently conservative, I would think. I mean, uh, the, uh, you have black people that go to church in, in greater numbers than probably any other group. Uh, most of uh, the people that I talk to that are black are pro-life. Uh, and, and all these other things that are really conservative uh, principles, it looks like that, that, that uh, we should take this opportunity to make inroads into that vote because they vote 90 percent plus for the uh, for the Democrat, whether it's Obama or, or whoever it is. But it doesn't make any sense for them and it doesn't make any sense for the country. It doesn't make any sense at all other than that's just what they've done historically. That is one of the things that uh, I hope to, to do with my book is to make in some inroads into doing that. I'm always t- all constantly talking to black and white conservatives about, uh, you know, brainstorming the kinds of things that we can do in order to reach the black community. Uh, bringing up things like that is definitely a good idea. The problem is they've been very effectively propagandized in one measure that, uh, you know, they believe whatever they believe about the Democrats, they believe that uh, Republicans are... Uh, a big pack of racists because, of course, Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson, for a seat at the liberal table and lots and lots of money, continue to tell them that conservatives and Republicans are a big, you know, a pack of racists. So we really have to, you know, I think it's very positive that some some more of these uh, black conservatives are running for office and people like me are coming out of the arsenal as a, you know, for want of a better... Uh, expression, you know, coming out and saying, you know what, you can call me what you like, you can, you know, sticks and stones, but this is the truth as I see it. And I think that, you know, the response I've gotten from my book is that a lot of people feel they have a lot more freedom to talk about these things when someone comes out there and, and says them. So I think it's going to take a little, it's going to take some time, but I think you have the same sort of awakening going on in the black community as you did among people like in the Tea Party movement, albeit somewhat more gradual. Right. Yeah, people have finally woken up in the Tea Party movement, too. Uh, Eric Rush, uh, the book is uh, Negrophilia, From Slave Block to Pedestal America's Race Obsession, available wherever fine books are sold. And, of course, you're a columnist for World Net Daily. You can check him out at worldnetdaily.com. Eric, a pleasure, my friend. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. You have a great day. You, too.